So now the next big question which arose with these discoveries was to prove that genes indeed physically reside on chromosomes. Show an association between genes and chromosomes. And of course, although they had, you know, black and vestigial and, you know, many other crosses, black, vestigial, cinnabar, different phenotypes they were chasing. But still, you know, the idea that, you know, you have a phenotype which is associated with a specific chromosome and then from parents to offsprings to grandchildren to great grandchildren, you can follow it. That was not yet fully proved. So they were very lucky. Morgan's lab was very lucky um, that they discovered a mutant which was called white mutant. Soon I, I'll explain you that. So remember we today started our lecture from this point where we said, okay, whether Mendelian laws are true or the chromosomal theory of inheritance, because Mendel had no idea about chromosomes. But Mendel's laws were all 100% true, and even today they are correct. And from 100 years from today, they will be fully applicable. And Mendel was extremely lucky. He studied seven traits, and all the seven phenotypes he studied, they were on seven indi each independent chromosome. So that's why he could see always very nice law of independent assortment, fully you know applicable in his studies. But it was only after the discovery of chromosomes that, and then the genetic map, Morgan's lab prepared, they said that, yeah, you know, it's basically association of genes and chromosomes, and, you know, genes reside on chromosomes, and from there on, we started calling this chromosomal theory of inheritance. But the question was, they wanted to identify a chromosome uh, we should carry an allele which they can, you know, follow during generations. They discovered, as I said, a uh, fly mutant. So normal flies, normal wild type flies, they have their eyes red. And the mutant one was with white eyes. In flies, it's a bit confusing, but in flies, the name of the gene, which gives you mutant phenotype, so here is white, that symbol is used to give symbol of gene. So wild type, white gene will give you red eyes. White is the mutant phenotype. So when white gene will be mutant, you will get mutant phenotype. And you know, they, I explained you already this whole life cycle of fruit flies, why they chose this, because in 10 days they could see the whole, uh, you know, inheritance of phenotypes um, and then go to the next generation and then next generation, instead of, you know, working with pea plants. Now, this discovery of white mutant what they discovered they said okay when we cross red which is normal wild type wt means wild type with white flies all are red So what is this phenotype then? What do you conclude about white phenotype? Recessive. It's recessive, okay? White is recessive and wild type is dominant. 
okay? This is the F1. However, they found some very interesting phenotypes. So, normal red eyes female, normal, uh, sorry, wide eyed mutant males, all red eyes females, which tells us, yeah, white is recessive and dominant. But when they took F1, these ones, F1 red-eyed females and cross them with normal, normal means wild type, males, they got all daughters normal, but half of the sons were normal, half of the sons were white eyes. If you change, let's say you have, this is one scenario. If you change, you say, okay, I have white mothers cross to red fathers. So you changed. Here you use normal red eye mother. Here you use mother white and father normal wild type. Already in F1, right away in F1, they got all males white and all females were normal red. So they got confused. What is happening? You know, the phenotype, white phenotype is recessive. How by just changing the phenotype of mother or father, different phenotypes are coming. And in particular here, when you have F1 red eyed females, you cross it with normal, you know, you get half sons normal and half sons white. So they went back to literature. They tried to find what could be going wrong and they were lucky already in 1905, Nettie Stevens and Nettie and Stevens, they had discovered an odd pair of chromosomes. What they discovered, they had discovered that under microscope, when they looked at cells from females or cells from males, you know, they had same pairs of chromosomes, same homologs. They look, you know, similar, but one pair of chromosome was different. And this was called, they named it, since it's different, they said it's heteromorphic pair, <clears throat> not similar. All the other are homomorphic. Homologs means shape and size of chromosomes are similar. You will see if you draw them, they are like, you know, let's say the first pair of chromosome looks like this. Or the second one, you know, look like this. Third one pair may look like this. But one pair was different, which was like, you know, this. And they named this heteromorphic. They discovered that this heteromorphic pair is present in females. In males, this differently looking pair is this heteromorphic pair is present in males, but in females, when they looked at this heteromorphic pair, in females, 
it was same, not heteromorphic. Both the homologs were there. So Morgan's lab hypothesized that these heteromorphic pairs of chromosomes, they have something to do with sex determination. They must be, because you know, in males we see this heteromorphic pair by Nettie and Stevens was called X and Y. This one, which was only present in males, was given Y and this one X. So females had two X, but in males it was X and Y. All the males. So Morgan's lab thought, let's assume the gene which we are playing with, which is Y gene, you know, this could be on the X chromosome. And when white will be on X chromosome, since there are two similar homologs in females, we will have white like this. And in males, it will be like this. Because there's one X, and the other is Y. And they said, using this, we can explain the strange results. Now assume we have normal red eyes. Normal red eyes, there are two X chromosomes in this female. So normal red means it's dominant allele. In, in the males, it's white, it's recessive, small w, and then Y. When we will go to next generation, gametes will be either this, gametes will be capital W or capital W by female, and small w or y by male. In the F1, when individuals will come, we will have this possibility x of father or we will have this one with y this one with this x, x or this one with y the phenotype of all of them will be red this is female, two X chromosomes. One X, one Y, this is male. Two X chromosomes, female. And one X, one Y, male. Everybody is red eyes. Now, if you take red-eyed female from F1, what was the red-eyed female from F1? These ones. Red-eyed female, because there are two X chromosomes, in female, small w, normal male, normal male means capital W and Y chromosome. If we draw a checkerboard here, let's say the female gametes will be with W, small w, and male gametes will be capital W and Y. Y ko aise bhi likhte. So, what will be the genotypes? Capital W, Y, small w, and small w, Y. What will be the phenotypes now? You conclude? Phenotypes kya honge? Eye color ke zaap se. 3 ratio 1, 3 red and 1 white. 
Think again. On Y chromosome, there is no Y gene. Because Y is not homolog of X. So what will be phenotypes? All red. All red? Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, first tell me which ones are males, which ones are females. Which ones are males and which ones are females here? जनाब कौन से मेल्स हैं कौन से फीमेल्स हैं एवरीथिंग विद वाई इज अ मेल जी एवरीथिंग विद द वाई इज अ मेल एवरीथिंग विद द वाई इज अ मेल वेरी गुड सो दिस इज अ मेल एंड दिस इज अ मेल व्हिच वंस आर फीमेल the other two so capital w w and capital w small w yeah so these are females so first tell me the phenotype of females red eyes both of them g normal red eyes g ye red hongi kyunki this is recessive so now tell me these two are the males what is the phenotype of males one red eye and one white eye one red eye this one is red because this is dominant since there is no copy on the homolog chromosome they assumed so whatever the single copy is its effect will be there so this one will be white and this one will be red is it clear yes sir good so now let's move on so morgan's lab as i already solved it they said white color gene gene which gives red eyes in wild type flies actually resides on x chromosome and since it's a recessive phenotype whenever we will have homozygous recessive mutation in the y gene in females because it it lies on the x chromosome and in females there will be two copies of x chromosome we will see white phenotype but if it's a heterozygous we will see red eyes in females but since there is only single x in the males and y chromosome does not harbor the y gene if we will have white mutation on single x chromosome of males the phenotype will be white eyes this is what we just learned so this is what they did it and you know you can change parents sex of you know different crosses like i already did some there on this slide you know you can manipulate use normal red females white males you know white females red or here you can say okay i take um the normal males from f1 not the normal we will say 
red eyed males instead of females let's take males and then take normal wild eye female what will be the what will be the uh, outcome in the f2 so these kinds of crosses you can do it yourself and then predict the phenotypes so this was the first ever time because you know they they could pinpoint that you know gene which causes red eyes it's very nicely drawn here it's lying on the x chromosomes this is male or female this one female female this is female that because you have two x chromosomes male has single x and this white block is showing mutation which means small w and red is showing capital w why it does not harbor because it's not a homolog chromosome and then you can go through this scheme and tell us what are the phenotypes you just change the sex of the fly which contains white so here you have <laughs> you have homozygous recessive female and male has normal wild you can see the phenotypes bas na ye to time ho jata hai 15 minute aur hai magar ye to nahi chhodega so meri baat mujhe bachche ye bata de ki isme kya kya please mute your mic roha so this was also not only the discovery of white gene or you know it was discovery of a gene g josepha sir uh, the ye uh, x or y chromosome ki sirf kuch traits ke upar hi hoga hai jo ki x or y gene ke upar maujood hai sorry mujhe aapki awaaz nahi clear aayi please dobara bole सर जो ये कुछ चीजें जैसे कि आई कलर वगैरह है ये एक्स और वाई जीन के ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है इसलिए इनमें ये वेरिएशन आ रही है बाकी क्रोमोसोम्स के ऊपर तो इसका इफेक्ट नहीं ना होगा जी मैं उसी क्वेश्चन पे अभी आने लगा हूँ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन सो दिस नॉट ओनली प्रूव दैट यू नो जीन्स फिजिकली रिजाइड ऑन क्रोमोजोम्स एंड यू नो क्रोमोजोम थेरी got one more validation that you know chromosomes are basically the structures of inheritance and the inheritance of traits uh, from one generation to next actually depends on the genes which reside on these chromosomes it for for the first ever time linked you know genes with specific sex and inheritance we call this sex specific inheritance or sex linked inheritance okay but it also led to discovery that you know determination of sex so in in next century it turned out that you know sex determination male ness or female ness is actually linked to the genes which are residing on these chromosomes and the call them sex chromosomes and the chromosomes other than sex chromosomes for example in humans in last lecture i showed you you know or maybe in this lecture let me go back yeah in this lecture we have that slide let me go back for a while yeah here this is called karyotype you see these are the two sex chromosomes x and y all the others they are called autosomes these this pair is called sex chromosomes why because they harbor genes which play a role in determination of sex not only determination of sex but look 
look, eye color has nothing to do with the sex determination or the appearance of or development of sex traits, maleness or female. But there are genes on these chromosomes which decide whether when we are in our mother's womb, few cells, whether we are going to grow, we are going to develop as male, a boy or a female. So Morgan's lab not only discovered sex-linked inheritance, but also, you know, later on we learned that, you know, there are chromosomes, which we call autosomes and chromosomes, which are involved in determination of gender. And we call them sex chromosomes. What is the evidence? So now what we know that last 50 years or so, we learned that yes, indeed, uh, determination of sex is due to presence of either two X chromosomes or one X and XY. For example, in humans and in fruit fly, if you have two X chromosomes, you will develop as female. If you have one X and one Y, you will develop as male. But there are differences between species. If you have abnormality, abnormal development, you end up having two X and one Y. In humans, you are a male, but in fruit flies, you are a female. And if you have X naught, which means due to abnormality, you don't have Y chromosome. In fruit flies, you develop as males, but in humans, you develop as females. Yeah. Uh, Gee, sir, there's a question from. Gee, Maria? Sir, do these abnormalities uh, contribute to any uh, like problems in the gender, or are they like males? Are they not abnormalities? They are only abnormalities of genotype, but not the abnormalities. No, no, they are abnormalities. For example, X not dies away right away, or after some time. Okay. Okay. XXY is also, you know, morphological phenotypes, abnormalities. So why, now let's learn why 2XY is male in humans and not in Drosophila and here X naught is female, uh, is a male in flies and female in humans. So in humans, what happens, the gene which causes maleness, the traits, development of traits as male, it resides on the Y chromosome. It's called SRY gene. So whenever you have Y chromosome, SRY gene is there. So due to SRY gene expression, the human having XXY will develop as a male. Look, this is the X chromosome. This is Y chromosome. They are not at all similar. This is all differential region. Only very tiny region is similar, which is like, this is pseudo autosomal region. Now, this gives you answer why two X and one Y gives you a male in humans, because this individual is going to have Y chromosome. Y chromosome is going to have SRY gene. So you're going to develop as male. X naught is not going to develop as males in humans, it will develop as female because SRY gene is absent. So single X is going to lead to development of female. However, in flies, it's different. So if you have X, X, Y, chromosome two, chromosome, two, this is how fly chromosomes we write. In flies, we have four chromosomes. We don't write the fourth chromosome on, on page because it's rudimentary, it's, it's not considered important. It's all silent genes there. So there are these autosomes in fly and 
let me erase this this is sex chromosome in normal fly it will be like this autosomes sex chromosomes now you have two autosome pairs and two sex chromosomes sorry two autosomes and one x two autosome pairs and two x so the ratio between the two x chromosomes over two in this case if it's one there's a counting mechanism in fly it develops as female and here you have one x one divided by two autosomes it develops as male there are specific genes on x chromosomes that's why you develop as female when 2x ratio autosome turns out to be one you develop as female and it's 0.5 here you develop as male that's why here you have xxy so xxy in fly will be how many x chromosomes two over two autosomes one despite presence of y chromosome in flies you develop as female and here you have one x over two autosomes ratio is 0.5 you develop as male clear here that yes sir so we stop it here for a while and i just show you another so that that's all for mendelian genetics law of segregation mono hybrid cross law of independent assortment the di hybrid cross the crossing over recombination and the genetic map and finally the sex linked inheritance all of them are involving complete dominance complete dominance red versus white it will be the red or white based on its dominant or recessive trait tall versus dwarf yellow versus green round versus wrinkled etc however can you still see my screen or no we can sir you can so i need to stop sharing this i need to share another one okay now let me pull another one because you should know there can be sometime in genetics so in your case we have so far covered complete dominance okay all the traits we studied we had complete dominance but sometimes you may come across situations in genetics where you have incomplete dominance incomplete dominance means you crossed a red flower with white flower and your f1 is pink neither red nor white you self cross pink f1 pink with pink and what you discovered you discover you know one red two pinks and one white 
and you are you are confused that yeah you know how come i have you know i crossed true breeding pure line red with true breeding white and you know i get pink so this happens when we have incomplete dominance and we can write it here for example phenotypes red cross to white it's written here all in f1 we have pink always write phenotypes first we went through uh, self crossing in f2 we get a ratio in which we have one red two pinks and one white you say how is it possible so you can assume you say okay i have red white and the pink will be this one because you know based on the genotypes this is on the possibility so in this case it means it's incomplete dominance red is not completely dominant that's why it's giving you pink and when i cross this thing self cross what i get i get this 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 and this so two pinks one red one white this one this is only possible when there is incomplete dominance remember my 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 uh, point we have covered everything we 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 learned that is only through complete dominance i'll upload these slides this gives you you know genetic map how can you you know have genetic map you know the centimorgans this is showing you centimorgan the distance between two genes yellow body color and white eyes and you have eye color vermilion and miniature wing and you have a gene rudimentary wing i brought this slide just to show you how using recombination they map different phenotypes and their link genes for example they discovered body color normal body color we said is brown they discovered a gene called yellow okay and they donate uh, they use small y for yellow they since yellow was also on the x chromosome they did this recombination analysis what strativan did for black and vestigial they measured the physical distance between different genes and that's how you finally came up with this is the centromere in the chromosome okay on the x chromosome and they arrange the genes you know rudimentary wing then the miniature wing then the eye color vermilion then the white and yellow all this through genetic crossing and recombination mapping you can also assume a b c different genes um, look at parental non parentals and calculate genetic distance in your course we will not go to this multiple loci which is shown here we will only take let's say two points point a and b or b and c or a and c at any given time we will only talk about two points two genes and we will ask you you know calculate the physical distance between the two genes based on recombination percentage clear any question any so question that incomplete dominance um does give proof for blending then pardon isn't incomplete dominance an example of blending then yeah incomplete dominance is like you know blending theory 
very good point very good point so incomplete dominance is like blending theory uh, which we discovered much later very late so mendel and morgan these people rejected blending theory they rejected the blending theory so look this is a problem this slide when i will upload these are the numbers given here and you know you have to calculate the recombination frequency how far apart a and b is or how far apart a and c is you can simply calculate from these distances try this yourself 